the Vola phone. <laughs> well, this is kind of like a, a Linux phone that nobody asked for, but has been out for some time. It took me a long time to get this here in the States. Uh, they lost my shipment or something, and then I had to call them or send them an email, and then I finally got it like five months later. So uh, needless to say, not exactly the warm and fluffy experience coming from Vola and their shipping. But then again, it's coming from Germany, and it's just kind of like an oddball phone that I don't think very many Americans are going to buy. So, eh, you know, I get what I, you know, I wouldn't expect it much. And this is the Ubuntu Touch version, which I wanted to kind of just do a discovery video on today. So let's get on the desktop, get into it, and uh, check out the Vola phone and uh, see what it has to offer. So Ubuntu Touch is kind of an interesting thing now i am using vnc here so it's gonna be a little laggy but at least you can see it a little bit better than doing kind of an overhead shot uh, i will say this is a very smooth even though it doesn't look smooth on the actual full screen here it is getting casted through vnc and if you've ever used vnc on computers hey you know the graphics are not all that uh, i would do hdmi out the first limitation of this phone is whenever you use usb-c out of the back end of this and if i go full screen here you can kind of see the usb slot i do have an hdmi uh, adapter for it that does not work on this phone i looked up a bunch of stuff on the web and it's just not going to be a thing it, apparently it's a design uh, limitation of this phone to where you will not have any hdmi output hence me using vnc now back on our desktop the very first thing i want to touch on is the settings menu i did notice this was a little bit more locked down than i'm used to on some linux phones probably to give a more consistent experience because when you can check for updates i've recently updated quite a bit of stuff but it was a very smooth experience i can pretty much navigate this well i say i can navigate it but ah you know uh but moving back through that, going to the settings menu, it does launch and it does feel very responsive. One thing I did notice at the very top here, you can't really make it out on your screen here, but look at the very top portion. I'm going to put my right here where it says keyboard layout. There's a little notch and I'm going to go full screen and show you what the actual screen looks like. You can kind of see the notch there covers up part of the ubuntu touch and that is super janky very 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 bad <laughs> design i would say uh so far not impressed by the ubuntu experience on the volo phone but coming back into our desktop here phone messaging does work i i didn't have any issues with that i was using at&t depending on your carrier you could have uh issues I know out in Europe, they don't have any issues with this. So it just depends on what kind of carrier you're rocking. If you are interested in doing this yourself, I am using the Mirror VNC server service to do this. The browsing, pretty smooth, uh, pretty seamless as well. You know, I, I don't really have any issues with this. And let's just search for Vola and hit enter. You can see DuckDuckGo's the default search of Ubuntu Touch. And pretty much it all works as you expect a web browser to work on the mobile phone. Everything working pretty good here. Move that over, swipe up to kill that. And we can move on to our next app. Music, I didn't really try anything on the music app as well. Ah, I just, I'm not a big music guy downloading and uploading. Usually I'm using uh, YouTube music, uh, which is obviously not going to go on to this because Google services and everything tied to Google has its own massive dependency and it's just a huge mess. So I would use probably like Spotify or something like that if I was going to do this or just download the music like old school, like we did back in the day and then uh, move on from that. Notes, just a basic notes app and you can sync it to Evernote. That's pretty cool but all these apps are actually pretty well designed for it just being you know only a couple years old at this point or really in mass production for a couple years and we can go to twitter web to see what the old twitter verse is saying probably nothing good but you can always follow me at chris titus tech i usually say what's on my mind right now i'm dying of heat and uh probably losing a little bit of weight because of the wonderful texas power grid 
but you can kind of see it is the web-based app so it's not perfect it's not great but at the same time it's not terrible either so it's very functional i would not say this is a bad experience i wouldn't say it's a great experience i'd just say yeah it's, it's all right and another cool thing about this phone is it does have an ad block that you can actually put on there this is pretty big and right now it hadn't been updated but i would activate this and select the list and then let's just add everything move back and then activate this would go down and download all the block lists and block these ads from ever being served on your cellular device this is a big proponent of what these devices are capable of doing and that's amazing this is one of the big pluses of not using this instead of possibly like a android device now you could still use android it just you know uh, you'd need to do more of a jailbreak, which funny enough, Vola does have an Android degoogled version of this phone, which I will try out in a newer video or another video and navigation. And let's go search Dallas, Texas. Well, let's just search Dallas, see what happens. There's Dallas and you can kind of navigate. Let's see if, uh, let's see if it can pinpoint me. I'm going to not show this portion of the video because I don't want weird stalkers showing up my, my door, but let's go ahead and go full screen here and we're going to say allow. That's kind of cool. It did pop up a little allow. Hey, do you want to allow this app access to your location service? So let's see if it can find me. And right now I don't have my SIM card in here, so I'm not able to get any GPS. So no go on the actual location tracking. Back on the desktop, we have the community app. And then there's also something pretty darn cool here called Tweak Tool, which is really neat. I, I highly recommend doing this. Let me go ahead, authenticate. Use my super secret password. And then we can actually do scaling. You can actually change the scale of things, which is kind of cool. So let's say I want to scale it back to like a 16, hit apply restart unity eight and this is going to be kind of an interesting tidbit because i'm vnc'd in here let's try to use this as a desktop a little bit obviously with vnc it's not going to be a great experience in the fact it doesn't have hdmi also not great but we could use like a pine phone or another type of phone that does allow hdmi to give us a full desktop experience something that i've been really interested in i know the pine phone's been making a lot of strides in that all right and now we are in the actual scale mode a little bit back i actually change it to a little bit of a window mode some fun things you can do here is with anything in linux if it's native linux you can actually do a lot more that's why i hate android so much because it's just so locked down and there's all this proprietary garbage in it but oh man with this we can do a lot of things i actually made a couple scripts to kind of change the look and feel you can see the windowed mode where we can actually take this window and we can move it around a little bit so i can take this and say hey you know what i want that look at my messages over here we'll pull this over into here and then i could have everything kind of side by side in window mode which is pretty slick we have a couple different things to do full windowed mode. If we do a Vim, uh, we can actually go into win.sh. You can see I've changed Unity 8 to be the windowed mode using this command. And if we want, we can actually go into phone.sh. And you can see you can change it back into stage. So if I want to change it back into a phone, I could easily just run that specific script. And I've made them executable just like you would on a Linux box. Now, other weird things with uh, the UB ports version of this Ubuntu, or maybe it's just the version from Vola, it does come locked down by default. So you do need to make your root writable. And you can do that with just a simple sudo mount output and remount, uh, read write, and then just your root. That'll make your root writable. Then you can grab new things from APT. I will notice since I'm using VNC here uh, and it's not able to interface with certain graphic elements. So I can't launch like G edit or something like that. But 
I've already already done Vim. I could grab my RC files. I could do a lot of different things just to kind of get your head rolling. But if you just do like an apt update or actually a pseudo apt update, typically this will fail uh, by by default. And right now you can see I could actually do this. I do not ever recommend doing an update or in an upgrade after doing a read write of your root. That'll probably brick your phone and it probably won't do anything else. So you've been warned if you do remount and rewrite to your root, good chance you can brick this thing. So be very, very careful when doing this. Obviously, don't run an APT upgrade. That would be bad. But it, you can grab little programs like Vim or maybe there's a little X11 forwarding you wanted to do or maybe you want to set up SSH to SSH into your phone and use it as a server. There's a lot of uh, capabilities here. I just kind of want to show these couple things. Now, that should get your brain working a little bit on the capabilities of this. It's come quite a ways in a year. And the Volophone, this is just a new iteration they just released this year in 2021, and I got it pretty late. I know the Pine Phone is still making strides where they did include HDMI, which is a huge thing because that means we could actually use this like a computer. And really the practical application of a phone like this is all in the actual usage of it as a computer, not a phone. Because whenever you stack um, a de-Googled phone or a non-Apple phone, or, you know, these these phones and these ecosystems have been created for decades, you know, or, or probably a decade and a half, I should say. And they have a massive amount of money and resources and they're very, very polished. And going from a very polished, very feature rich ecosystem to something like this is a, a jolt to the system. It's very freeing because you are now in control. Your GPS isn't turned on by default. You actually control what's going on, but you lose out on a lot of features and a lot of things that you're going to end up missing. Like my banking application, I don't know what I'd do. I can't deposit my checks because I can't access my Bank of America app or whatever app you have for that. So there's some very big limitations that you probably use your phone for right now that you can't just switch to. But I want to go ahead and review this as the Vola OS with the de-Googled experience and then just put the things in there that I need or I want and then use it and see what happens. So I'll do another follow-up video with this with the de-Googled Vola experience because I'm curious to see how that is. Overall, I would not recommend this phone in Ubuntu state. I'm gonna give a new review whenever I do it on Android, but as it is, if you wanna tinker with this, I say you just get the Pine phone, it's cheaper, and I think it's, I don't know where their shipping companies are, but it, it came pretty quick to me, and I got their shipping notifications, and I didn't have any problems with them, so Pine phone, 200 bucks, you get a phone, and you can tinker with it a little bit more, and that was a great phone. This phone, for Ubuntu Touch, I was like, ugh, don't do it. <laughs> I would I'd highly recommend just doing it as the Vola OS. And uh, I'll do a re-review of it with that because I just feel like that is really what this was intended for. But I've rambled on too long. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next video.